A. So we got a problem here where we're given a function that is actually integral. I like to call this an area so far function. And we're being asked a few questions about it. So let's start off by just taking what that function is. In part A, they're asking us to plug one into that. That'll help us get in a sense of what this even means. So that means I'm gonna replace the x, and the x is actually up here. I'm gonna replace that with a one. So right up here, that's where the one goes. Okay, and then we also got f of t dt. Now, the graph of the function here is f of t, you could say it's f of x. Uh, if you wanna say it's f of t though, then you would call this the t-axis. <clears throat> but anyway, we need to figure out the integral of f from two to one. Now that's the same thing as saying the negative of the integral from one to two. That makes a little more sense, it's one is less than two. So let's see what's going on at one and at two. So at one and two here, looks like we got ourselves a trapezoid. That'd be one way to do this problem. In fact, it looks like the height here is just one. Uh, on this side, it's gonna be three. So those would actually be the bases of your trapezoid. So that's gonna be one plus three over two, and we're gonna multiply by the height of the trapezoid. And the height of that trapezoid would actually just be one right there. So you have to multiply that by one. Okay, so one plus three over two, uh, that is two times one is two. So we got our answer for G of one. So the area in between here in this like trapezoid section is just one. Uh, sorry, two, <laughs> right here. That's the area for g of one, you have to get the area from one to two. But actually, missed something here. The negative, totally forgot about it. So we're doing the negative of the area there. So it's actually negative two. Okay, so that's not the same thing as the area here because they didn't ask us for the area from one to two, they asked us for the area from two to one. All right, moving on, we now gotta do g prime of one. So we're gonna start off with g prime of x, and then we're gonna get one. So once again, let's copy our function. And now it's gonna be g prime of x. So that means I need to take the derivative of this side, which means I also need to take the derivative of that side. Okay, so now if I take the derivative of a integral that has a constant at the bottom and an x at the top, turns out something nice is gonna happen. You can kinda cancel out the integral and the derivative sign, but you have to replace the t with an x. So you're gonna get f of x. So something kind of simple just ended up happening. g prime of x equals f of x. So that is one of the parts of the fundamental theorem of calculus. But now we're being asked for g prime of one. So it's gonna be g prime of one equals f of one. Hmm, well we have a graph for f of x. And what do we see happening at one here? Well, turns out it's actually just one. So f of one is one, which means g prime of one is one. That's a lot of ones to follow, but there we go. We got our answer for that one. Okay, let's move on to g double prime of one. Well, that means we're gonna need to check out what's going on with g double prime of x. So we already know that g prime of x is equal to f of x. So what does that mean? It means g double prime of x would equal f prime of x. So when we're asked for g double prime of one, that means it's gonna be f prime of one. That means I need to figure out the slope of the tangent line on f at one. And that slope is two over one. 
So many ones, we don't need the one on the bottom. Turns out the answer there is two. The slope of the tangent line here, if I were to draw a tangent line, it would just be overlaid on top of the line that's already there. So it's the same as the slope of the line that's already there, which is just two over one. Just count the boxes, up two over one, boom. You got your slope, two over one. All right, so that's it for part A. Let's hit the pause button. All right, welcome back. Now we are doing part B, where we need to figure out the absolute max of G. Well, let's remember this is G, and if you want to find an absolute max on a certain interval, one of the things you want to do is plug in the endpoints of that interval. And you also want to plug in whatever critical number you get. And whichever one happens to be the biggest, that'll end up being our absolute max. OK, but I can plug in negative 2, and I can plug in 5, and I can figure it out. But we're also going to need to figure out what the critical points are. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to take our g function and take its derivative and set it equal to 0. Well, that means I need to take the derivative of this and set it equal to 0. But we already did that before, and we said that that came out to f of x. So that was a little fundamental theorem of calculus. Once again, this cancels that, throw on the x, blah, blah, blah. OK, so now you got f of x has to equal 0. But let's remember, this is the graph of f of x. So where does f equal 0 here? Looks like it's happening at negative 1. And then this one, we'll say at 1 half. And then one last time at 5. But we already have 5. So the only critical numbers that we ended up picking up was negative 1 and also half. So we're going to need to do g of negative 1, g of 1 half, and also g of negative 2 and g of 5. And we need to figure out whichever one comes out the biggest. All right, so let's start plugging these guys in. If we plug them in, we're going to be looking at the integral from 2 to negative 2 of f of t. And the next one would be from 2 to 5. Next one would be from 2 to negative 1. And this one would be from 2 to 1 half. Now, the one that's probably the easiest to tackle first is the one that's from 2 to 5. We've got 2 over here, and then 5's over there. So that one is one of the nicer ones because 2 is actually less than 5 with all the other ones. We're going to have to use that negative trick that we used before. We're going to have to say, OK, this is equal to the negative of the integral from negative 2 to 2. So before we get started with all those other ones, let's just tackle the one from 2 to 5. So from 2 to 5, what kind of area do we have? Well, they told us that we have a quarter of a circle here. And what we have is underneath that quarter of a circle. OK, well, if I were to set up a square here, it looks like it is a square, where it's got a width of 3, a height of 3, well, that would produce an area of 9. Now, if I wanted to get that gray area, I could take that 9 and subtract the area of the quarter circle here. OK, so that would be 1 quarter of pi times r squared. In this case, the r would be 3. So there we go. We end up getting. What we need here is going to be 9 minus 9 fourths of pi. OK, so that's going to be some sort of positive amount. We know that based upon looking at the gray area, it looks like it's above the x-axis, so it's got to be positive. 
So I'm just gonna keep a note of that by putting greater than zero. Now, the next one I wanna tackle is the one from two to a half. Now we are gonna to have to do that negative trick. We're gonna put negative from one half to two. But the reason why I'm going after that one next is because it's gonna be pretty simple. Let's take a look at what it looks like on the graph. So on the graph, we've got one half, we got two, drop a line down here. We can see that all we're dealing with here is just a triangle. And that triangle has a base of 1.5 and it's got a height of three and triangles always require one half base times height, so one half of 1.5 times three. And this time I'm gonna remember that we have this negative out front. Okay, there we go. And now let's calculate this. This would be negative one half of 1.5 times three. Nice way to do that would be by taking half of the three. That would be 1.5 and then you still have that other 1.5 right here. So we're doing 1.5 times 1.5. That is 2.25, so you end up getting a negative 2.25. So that's definitely not the absolute max because we had already gotten a positive result for this one, and a positive anything is always bigger than a negative anything. So just to keep track of that, let me just cross this out. We know that the absolute max definitely is not this guy. Okay, so let's move on. So the next one I wanna do is from two to negative one, that's the same thing as the negative of the integral from negative one to two. And the reason why I'm doing this one next is it's actually gonna be a little bit closer to the two right over here than using the negative two. You'll see that in a second when we get the other one done. But for this one, it's actually going to include part of what we just did. We could say that the area here was 2.25. Now that's the positive version of the area. We ended up getting negative of that, but the positive version, the thing that we're ultimately gonna have to take the negative of in a second is 2.25, so we know that. But if we're going from negative one, to two, then that means we also need to consider this other area that exists underneath the x-axis. But once again, it's another triangle, and it's also got a base of 1.5, and now we're gonna have to multiply that by a height of one, <clears throat> but it's underneath the x-axis. So we're gonna have to treat our final answer as negative. Okay, so a lot of negatives floating around here. It's gonna be negative of, <clears throat> but we end up getting a negative answer for this part. So that's gonna be negative one half base 1.5 times the height, which is one. And we're gonna be multiplying all those out, but let's also remember that there's another area right here, the 2.25 from before. So we're gonna add those up, and then because of this negative out front, there's a negative parentheses on top of the whole thing. So long story short, the area underneath here will end up being right here, it's gonna be counted as negative area though. And we can see it's gonna come out to a negative. And then we're adding the 2.25. So let's calculate that. That'll be half of 1.5, that's negative 0.75. And we're adding that to the 2.25. That'll come out to, what is that, 1.5? Okay, so we've got a contender here he's gonna have to be compared with nine minus nine fourths pi. Let's get that out of the way right now. Let's figure out approximately what that is. Nine minus nine fourths pi. 
that comes out to about 1.9. Okay, so if that one comes out to about 1.9, we actually know that so far G of five is the real contender in the show. So we know that the answer is not gonna be this one because the answer 1.5 is less than the 1.9 that we just got. So there's one last guy we still have to figure out and that's G of negative two. So let's just copy this down here. We're gonna take care of this integral and that means we're gonna be once again having to negate it. So it's from negative two to two. Okay, well that means we need one more triangle here. There is a base of one, height of one, and we're gonna take one half of that. So the area of this is actually just gonna be a half. So we're gonna end up with the negative of one half plus the negative 0.75. That was what we got from doing the brown guy right here plus the 2.25. So we already know what these guys come out to. They're gonna come out to 1.5. And then we have to add in the one half, which seems like saying 0.5, right? So that gets you negative two, that's a negative answer. Therefore, we finally figured out all of those G values. Now the maximum of them all was the king nine minus nine fourths pi. So when they ask you for the absolute max, you're gonna say nine minus nine fourths pi. Now, this is not the only way you could have figured it out, but it is a pretty standard way where you're doing the end points, you're plugging them in, and you're also plugging in whatever your critical points are. Seeing whichever one comes out the biggest, and once again, it was nine minus nine fourths pi. All right, so because that took a eternity, I'm gonna end the video here. We're gonna do part C in a part two. All right, hope you liked this video. If you got anything out of it, don't forget, I need likes and subscribes. I'm dying out here. All right, thank you.